In this video, I'll walk you through the total synthesis of BERT 337, not with boring 2D sketches, but using 3D modeling to see the reaction like never before. Throughout the synthesis procedure, you will literally see the transition state in 3D, step by step. I guarantee learning organic chemistry this way will help you to level up from a confused student to a confident chemist. The key chemistry in this total synthesis is organocatalysis. You know, carrying out a huge number of reactions is only possible because of transition metals. That's mainly because they have labile coordination sites that can hold chiral ligands and allow substrates and reagents to come together. Interestingly, these reactions can happen in a chiral environment. But in the early 2000s, several chemists around the world realized that it's not always necessary to use metals to get high level of enantioselectivity in catalytic reactions. Simple, chiral, and enantiomerically pure organic molecules can also react with substrates, providing a chiral environment and, at the same time, activating them for enantioselective attack. In this video, I'm breaking down the enantioselective allo reaction catalyzed by proline. When it comes to the allo reaction, using secondary amines is a pretty effective approach. The amine attacks the analyzable ketone or aldehyde to form an enemy. Now this double bond becomes activated due to the nitrogen atom. The goal is for this double bond to attack another carbonyl group, forming a valuable carbon-carbon bond. After hydrolysis, the carbonyl group comes back in the final compound. Now here's an important question. Which phase of the carbonyl group does the nucleophile attack? Proline is a naturally occurring amino acid that's widely used in asymmetric allo reactions, mainly because it has a chiral center at its two position, along with the carboxylic acid group. Now let's dive into the mechanism to see how it works. In the allo reaction, proline's carboxyl group plays a key role because it can form a hydrogen bomb that helps organize the six membrane in transition state. To make this clear, let's take a look at the 3D model. The oxygen of the carbonyl group that's being attacked by enamine interacts with this hydrogen of the carboxylic acid. This interaction forms the front side of the chain-like transition state. On the other side, the nitrogen atom of proline also interacts with this hydrogen. Here you can see the double bond that's about to attack the carbonyl group, but this attack can happen on only one phase of the carbonyl. Why? Because the R group of the aldehyde prefers to sit in the equatorial position. Let's rotate the aldehyde so that the opposite phase is attacked instead. This new transition state becomes destabilized because the R group is now in a pseudo-axial position, leading to a serious 1-3 dioxial interaction. So the hydrogen bonding and the chirality of proline are what drive this facial selectivity. After hydrolysis, the aldol product is enantiomerically pure, not a mixture of enantiomers. Now let's go through the forward synthesis. In the first step, this aldehyde reacts with another aldehyde to create this conjugated product. So it's actually an aldol reaction, where this aldehyde is added onto this carbon atom. Notice that this aldehyde is unanalyzable, so it can only be attacked, not do the attacking. That means it can only react with an analyzable aldehyde, which can form the enolate or enol. Using this strategy prevents cross aldol reaction and increases the yield of the desired product. Did you notice that there is no base used in this reaction? The reason is that the solvent is very polar. That means the analyzable aldehyde tends to exist more in the enol form rather than the ketone. So its nucleophilicity is high enough to attack the other aldehyde even without any base. In the next step, the conjugated inner mediate is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride. Actually, there are two active sites for reduction, the double bond and the carbonyl group. So, which one gets reduced? There are three possibilities. Only the double bond is reduced, only the carbonyl group is reduced, or both are reduced. Pause the video and try to figure out what happens. Lithium aluminum hydride is strong enough to reduce both. In fact, aluminum chloride helps by increasing the electrophilicity of the carbonyl. It binds to the oxygen atom, making the whole conjugated system easier to reduce. After that, the resulting alcohol is oxidized using CERN protocol to produce an aldehyde. This reduction oxidation sequence is used because there is no good reagent that can selectively reduce only the double bond. 
Now we have an analyzable aldehyde that reacts with this diazine to form a carbon nitrogen bond and at the same time creates a chiral center. To ensure the chiral center is correctly installed, a tetrazole derivative of proline is used as an organocatalyst. At the beginning of the video, you saw how free components can organize into a six member during transition state through hydrogen bonding to induce chirality in the product. This reaction follows the same rule. The difference here is that the tetrazole moiety replaces the carboxylic acid, but it can still form effective hydrogen bonding thanks to the nitrogen atom. Another key difference is that the analyzable aldehyde attacks the nitrogen-nitrogen double bond in diazine instead of the carbon-oxygen double bond in an aldehyde. Also, the diazine derivative is non-chiral, so it doesn't matter which phase is attacked by the nucleophile. Unlike our first example, where the electrophile, the aldehyde, had facial selectivity, here the selectivity comes from the nucleophile side. Mechanistically, chiral proline reacts with the analyzable aldehyde to form an enamine. Then, the nucleophilic carbon of the enamine attacks one of the nitrogens in diazine. Again, this forms a chain-like transition state where there is a hydrogen bond between the nitrogen of the tetrazole moiety and the nitrogen of the diazine. On the other side of the chair, the enamine's carbon attacks the electrophilic nitrogen. After hydrolysis, the chiral center is correctly introduced into the molecule with high enantioselectivity. Now the aldehyde is converted to carboxylic acid using sodium chloride. In its process, it forms sodium hypochlorite, which is even more reactive than sodium chloride. So it must be quenched by 2 methyl 2 butene. In the next step, the carboxylic acid is converted to an ester using trimethylcyl diazomethane. First, a nucleophilic carbon is formed in situ. Then, it abstracts the acidic proton from the carboxylic acid, making the oxygen a good nucleophile. Next, the negatively charged oxygen attacks the carbon atom of the diazomethane, and at the same time, a nitrogen gas is expelled, which provides a strong driving force for the reaction. During the next sequence, we're gonna cleave the nitrogen-nitrogen and carbon-nitrogen bonds to create an unprotected primary amine. This process begins with trifluoroacetylation of this nitrogen atom, which is more reactive than the other nitrogen. Trifluoroacetic anhydride acts as a good electrophile for a nitrogen atom. Now the nitrogen-nitrogen bond can be selectively cleaved by samarium iodide. Next, this carboxyl benzyl group leaves the molecule by treatment with HBr. First, the carbamate carbonyl group is protonated, setting the stage for attack by bromide ion, leading to cleavage of the benzylic carbon-oxygen bond. The resulting unsubstituted hydrogen carbamate is unstable, so it decomposes to release carbon dioxide, leaving behind the free amine. In the next step, the main skeleton of our target is almost complete. Let's have a look at the product. To recognize the formal nitrogen and the ester group, if you track the aromatic substituent, you will see that this came from the former nitrogen atom, and this is the carbonyl's ester group. So, this new part has just been installed. To build this new part and complete the 5 membrane ring, known as hydentine, the amino acid ester reacts with an isocyanide that has a dicolor aromatic substituent. First, the free amine attacks the carbon atom of the isocyanide pushing electrons up into the nitrogen. Now this stage is set for an intramolecular attack. The negatively charged nitrogen attacks the ester carbonyl and is formed a 5 membered ring through an addition elimination mechanism where methanol is expelled. Finally, the hydentoin is deprotonated using a non nucleophilic base LIHMDS and then it attacks iodomethane in an SN2 type reaction to give the target molecule.